Hey guys, it's Nikki with That Homeschool Life, where I bring you real, honest, and practical homeschooling information to help you on your homeschool journey. It is a whopping 1 a.m. in the morning, can't y'all tell, but I'm here for you. This is a part two video on Singapore math slash primary mathematics third grade level. In this video, I'm reviewing the Home Instructor's Guide for 3A. If you want to watch my part one video where I go over the student textbooks, the student workbooks, and the test, watch this video here. Okay, but don't go. Watch this video. You're already here. Then go watch that video. But don't worry, I'll have a link down below with uh, the part one video, okay? So you're not gonna miss anything. Watch this video and then afterward, at the end of the video, it'll take you to the part one or you can go down in the description box and catch part one, okay? So let's get right into it. So I have here the Home Instructor's Guide for Primary Mathematics 3A Standards Edition, okay? This walkthrough, flip through is the Standards Edition. I will be doing a Common Core and a U.S. Edition um, eventually. Okay, so I'm starting with the Home Instructor's Guide because it's very important. You do need this, guys. It's going to make your life a lot easier. So let me zoom in. This is the introduction. And in this introduction, oh, maybe I zoomed in too much. I'm going to focus on this for a bit because it's very key to give you the overall big picture of primary mathematics. Now, let me just zoom in just a little bit. Don't worry about the step on top. Okay, so the guide includes the following. So you're going to have your scheme of work, which is your suggested week weekly schedule, which is so important, guys. Manipulatives, objectives, notes. The notes are actually quite uh, pretty helpful materials that you're going to need for the chapters or activities or lessons uh, the activity your discussion the practice okay now when we get into the practice the workbook the reinforcements all of this from here on down these are supplemental books that you do not have to get but they are helpful so once you get to practice all the way down, these are optional. These are things that you can buy in addition. Do you need these? No, you do not. Will they help? Possibly, and yes, depends on you. There is a practice book, there is a workbook, and the reinforcements would be an, an additional extra practice book. So there are two practice books. And then you have games and enrichment. And they don't say it here, but the challenging word problems are additional things you can use. And on the back, you have the test, answers, mental math, and appendix, okay? So remember, all of these are additional. You don't need them. You will do just fine if you don't get these, but they're there if you want them. That's your introduction. Got it? Okay, so now let's get to the scheme of the work. This is your meat and potatoes, guys, okay? This is going to tell you how to juggle all the balls if let me zoom in here. If you decide to use the textbook, the workbook, the guide, the extra practice, and the test, this is going to show you how all of it comes together from chaos to order, okay? This is how it's broken down, okay? Basic Excel sheet, spreadsheet. You have your week, your objectives, your textbook, workbook, and guide. That's not in being shy, okay? Now, let's just take one, okay? We're just gonna go through one. So, we're gonna look at the unit, the first unit of the book. Unit one, numbers to 10,000, okay? Now, we're gonna jump into the week, okay? So first week, guys, you just cracked open this book. Then let's just take Monday, week one. Week one, Monday. Just make it easy, okay? Day one, or Monday, for me. These are the two objectives you're going to be, your child's going to be learning or you're going to be teaching that day. Now, the child's textbook, this is where these problems, these objectives can be found. So we're going to go to the textbook and turn to page eight. I'm trying, I don't know which child's book I grabbed. Hopefully it's not written in too much. You're going to turn to page eight. Let me just pull out. Okay. Page 8 to 11, okay? So you look at this, thousands, hundreds, tens, ones, bingo, we're matched up. And it says you're going to be using 
pages 8 to 11. This is 8. This is 9. 10. 11. Okay, so now you know what you're looking at. So that's your textbook. Okay, then for the workbook, 7 through 9. There's your workbook. 7 through 9. So it's how many pages of work to do? 7, 8, 9. Okay, you can always paper clip this or put stickies on it so it's easy to find or easy to take off and move to the next um, day. Okay, that's, that's what you're doing. So you're reading through... What did I say? Page eight. You're teaching this. More practice in here. And you're good to go. Now, before you do all that, it's the cover. Okay, so here is the walkthrough for the Home Instructor's Guide for 3A Primary Mathematics, also known as Singapore Math. All right, so here's your intro. We went over the scheme of work that's your nuts oh my makeup getting all over the place that's your nets and bolt okay this is your weekly schedule all right you have your weeks and you have your days so here's your week and then each number you see represents a different day to do your lessons okay so don't be thrown off by that you see one two three and then you see one again don't worry about that you could this could be monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday Monday, Tuesday, go in any way that works best for you. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see this better. Okay. And then at the end of week two, you have a review. Okay. So every few weeks, you're going to have a review. Now you're on unit two, week three, and that's addition and subtraction. And then you're doing sum and difference. And then let's move over to week five, which is uh, estimation, word problems, adding ones, tens, and thousands, okay? And as you can see, as I said, like look at chapter week five. Look how they, look how they chop it up, okay? So you would spend one, according to them, you could spend one day on estimation and then the next day you can do extra practice, the next day you could do a test, or you can just do the estimation lesson and then jump to chapter four and go on to models to solve one step world problems and then the next day do this and that. Um, so you, you can chop it up any way you want to, which is one reason why I like the scheme of work, okay? And then you see the rest, subtracting ones, tens, etc. Uh, week seven, we should be hitting that review pretty soon. Yes, and then you have the, the second review and then unit three, multiplication and division, okay? And so I hope you guys can see all that pretty well. Uh, looking back, you have your review and then you go into word problems and then multiplying ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, okay? Again, if you'll notice now, look look how these numbers change. Is my nail dirty? Uh, say we say, let's just pretend that one is Monday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then six and seven. Um, now you can break that up as seven days, and then uh, the next day six starts as Monday or Tuesday. Or you can decide, okay, well I want to do all of this in one week, so maybe I do. Uh, one and two on Monday, this is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then these two on Friday. You can break this up any way you want to, okay? Then we go into quotient and remainder, chapter five, and then week 12 is the third review. And then there's a test option if you want to do that, which is optional. That is a separate purchase. Moving on, unit four, multiplication. This is focusing on multiple multiplication of six seven and nine okay multiplying and dividing more multiplying and dividing and you see how they break it up one week is just focused on dividing by seven and then the next week dividing by eight and then the next week dividing by nine lots of practice there for mastery and then we have uh, more multiplication and division and then our review four and then the uh, next unit five data analysis so that's presenting data, probability, not a long section, not a long unit at all. And then that's it. Then you have your review, your last review for this semester or for 3A. And then you have your answers to the mental math, which is optional stuff, and your appendix. appendix, appendix. Okay, 
Okay, so after you look at the scheme of work, you have your manipulatives, okay? And it shows you all the different kinds of manipulatives you'll use in this book, in this curriculum, and they give you a description on what they are and how to use them. So you have a whiteboard, dry erase markers, multi-link cubes, base 10 set, place value disc, place value chart. Uh, watch my video on my... Uh, I think it's called Math Manipulatives. And I, I talk about the place value chart and the base 10 set. And then you have over here, your 100 chart, number cubes, number cards, counters, and place value cards. I think some of, I think when I bought this, I think it came with number cards or something. I'm not sure. I bought this like millions of years ago. All right, so that's your manipulatives. Those are your manipulatives. And then the supplements, they talk about the workbooks and stuff like that. You read that on your own. And then this is what the lesson looks like, okay? You're, you're ready to start cooking. You have your objectives, the vocabulary, your notes. And then it goes into how are you going to teach the lesson, okay? But these are more of your notes. And you see how they bold all the vocabulary, okay? And then at the bottom, they'll have the materials that you'll need for this lesson, and then here's your activity. One thing I like about primary mathematics, it does, it's very hands-on, very hands-on with the manipulatives, okay? Uh, let's see, because it, primary mathematics operates off of a concrete pictorial abstract model, and I'll discuss that in another video. So here's your activity. It's going to show you how to set it up and uh, what to get out of it, and it gives you talking points for how to teach that to your child. And then again, more pictures when you're showing them the place value mat or the chart, you know, it's showing you how to set it up, what it's supposed to look like. And then you have an area, an area right here, the discussion, because there's a lot of conceptual stuff going on in here. And so the discussion area, um, makes little, gives you like little pointers or little things to make note of to discuss with your child or to make sure it's, um, something that you've made know. Well, basically, it's things that you should, you know, really highlight or discuss with your child, okay? And then in the gray boxes, these are the answers to the problems in the textbook. Um, now for the workbook, um, if you are if you were to use the, um, the workbook, <coughs> you'll have the answers um, off to the side as well. And, but that, that's going to be on page seven. And then reinforcement is your extra practice. They don't have challenging word problems in here, but they do have the extra practice workbook. And there you go. So for this lesson, that was eight, nine, and 10. You just covered it here. Okay. And then the next page or the next lesson or the next day, um, they call problems task. So when you see task four to eight, that's really your your problems. And let me just show you what they're talking about. So task four through eight, pages 11 to 12. So here's page 11. And the tasks are four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay? So task is just another word for, for the problem or the question or whatever. Okay? And then... Um, Again, you have your, your, you have your answers here. And then if you're using a workbook, they'll have the answers toward the end of the chapter. So you don't get confused. You, so you don't get confused over, are these the answers to the textbook or the workbook? So the workbook, um, answers are, you, are at the end of that, of this chapter in the teacher's guide. And then for enrichment, um, these are extra things that you can do. You don't have to buy anything for this. This is at least for this lesson. They just give you things that you can do. Um, so usually you're going to be using the manipulatives to um, extend the learning. And that's like lesson one. Okay. L the first lesson or two. Oh, and these are, these are the answers for the workbook. Okay. That will be at the end of the chapter. And then um, uh, one of the lessons for that week, they talk about the game, his or game. And it um, gives you, tells you the materials you need, the procedure, all of that. So that's all you need to do for chapter one, for chapter one. And then there's chapter two, okay? So I just kind of just did one chapter so you can kind of see what the um, the guide is like, okay? 
So in the back of your home instructor's guide where it says mental math, which is optional, they, they do give you some things to do, but it's to practice being able to recall your math facts basically, or uh, procedures that you learn pretty quickly. And so that's gonna be in the back of your home instructor's guide, your HIG, and you can just photocopy these if you have you know, kids or if you wanna resell. So that's what that looks like. That's the mental math part. And then you have your fraction bars. So just so you know, you don't have to buy a lot of those manipulatives. Uh, some of the manipulatives that are suggested in this guide, you can get in the back of the book. And I should have said that at the beginning. You just print this out on cardstock, fraction circles, okay? And then in some instances, they'll tell you where this applies to the lesson, okay? Uh, inch graph paper, centimeter graph paper, And there you go. And that's just additional. And isometric dot paper. All right. So, um, I and that's it. Thanks for watching.